And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today we're going to look at uh, a lesson on relative motion. And in this um, lesson, we're going to look at relative motion and various frames of reference uh, through which we can look at relative velocity. Okay, so I want you to think about this. I want you to think about um, you standing still or perhaps sitting in the room that you're in right now. Um, you would think that your velocity is zero because you're sitting still, aren't you? However, you are in fact traveling at 30 kilometers a second through space with the Earth as it travels around the sun. So you can think that while you're sitting listening to this video, you are in fact traveling very, very quickly around the sun. So as we can see, all motion is relative. So all motion is relative to the frame of reference or what you place that, that motion in comparison to. And so therefore in the frame of reference of uh, your bedroom or the classroom or wherever you're listening to this video, your velocity is zero. But with respect to the frame of reference of the sun, you are moving at 30 kilometers a second. Okay, so that gives you an idea of all relative velocity. Um, everything is relative. So let's think about this. Here's another example. Let's imagine that you're sitting on a bus and uh, you're sitting here at the back of the bus and your friend is sitting further towards the front of the bus and you throw, you have a tennis ball and you throw, much to the bus monitor's pain and suffering, you throw a tennis ball in the bus, okay? And you can say that the velocity of the ball relative to the bus is equal to seven meters per second forward. And I don't think that's terribly difficult to think about. But what if the bus is actually in motion? So what if the velocity of the bus is 22 meters per second forward? Well, now, what is the velocity of this ball as it travels through the air relative to someone standing at the side, perhaps a teacher, ready to yell at you for throwing a ball on a bus? Okay, so the question is, what is the velocity of the ball relative to the Earth? Now to do this, we need to have um, a little bit of new notation here. So some of this new notation is right here. So the velocity, and I used a, a lowercase b to represent the ball and a larger b to represent the bus. So this velocity statement here is read, the velocity of the ball relative to the bus is equal to 7 meters per second forward. And if we come down here, we also have the velocity of the ball relative to the earth is equal to 22 meters per second forward. And now we have to look at how exactly are we going to solve these. Now, I think everybody can sit and think for a moment and intuitively say, I know what the speed of the ball is. Stop for a second and just ask yourself, what is the speed of the ball relative to the earth? Did you come up with 29 meters per second? Okay, let's see why it's 29 meters a second. So to solve relative velocity problems, we use what's called the chain rule. And the chain rule is really, really important. And it's important that we learn how to set up a chain rule. And all it is is a relative velocity vector addition problem, okay? So the chain rule is a handy little trick that allows vectors to be added together to solve a relative velocity problem. And so here is an example of our chain rule for this question. So we have our unknown, or what we're trying to find, which is the velocity of the ball relative to the earth. And what we do here is we say, well, that is equal to the velocity of the ball relative to the bus plus the velocity of the bus relative to the earth. Now, what is really important to notice here is that these outside subscripts are related to our unknown, while these inside subscripts are the same. Okay, And we can stack these up many, many vectors in length, and we can therefore have uh, several steps through our um, chain rules are relative velocity questions and have them answered um, with vector addition in this nature. But what you have to remember is that your outside 
Um, the two outside subscripts must equal what you're looking for and the inside subscripts must, you could say, cancel each other out. Okay, so here's what we get. We um, use our chain rule here and we go through and we say, okay, seven meters per second forward plus 22 meters per second forward equals 29 meters per second forward. So everybody pat yourselves on the back if you knew that intuitively, that's fantastic. But that was a really easy question. Okay, so let's take a look now at something that's a little bit more complicated. See, these kinds of questions can be in two dimensions or even three dimensions. And provided that we add our vectors, our velocity vectors properly, we'll be in good shape. So let's take a look at another example, okay? So here's another example, example number two. A boater wishes to cross a river. Rivers always run straight across your page, or if they're not straight across your page, they're straight up and down, okay? The boat can travel at 10 kilometers an hour relative to the water. This is often called water speed, okay, or speed relative to the water. The current has a uniform velocity of five kilometers per hour east. So I know that you know something about rivers, and so I know that we can now sketch this situation where we have the velocity of the current is five kilometers per hour east, and we want, we have a boat on the south side and we want it to cross to the north side. In fact, it doesn't really matter whether it was crossing to the north or to the south. The question didn't clearly state it, but because I wrote the question, let's say it starts on the south side and goes to the north side. And the question says, what is the velocity of the boat relative to someone on the shore? So now we can use what we know about chain rules and we can, we can get our velocities in terms of other frames of reference or relative to things. So this we're going to call the velocity of the boat relative to the water is 10 kilometers per hour north. Velocity of the water relative to the earth is equal to five kilometers per hour east. All right, so now we can set up our chain rule. And we can say the velocity of the boat relative to the earth or someone on the shore, which is the same way of saying that, is equal to the velocity of the boat relative to the water plus the velocity of the water relative to the earth. And you can see here that we have these two subscripts and we have our outside subscripts are the same as those, okay? And then if we go and take a look at our subscripts on the inside, you know that they're both W and you can think of them as canceling each other out. And so now we can add these together. And because they're vectors, we have 10 kilometers per hour north plus five kilometers per hour east. It doesn't equal 15 kilometers per hour because they're vectors, right? So we know now that we have to draw another triangle. Now, fortunately for us in this question, it's a right angle triangle. So we have here the velocity of the boat relative to the water. This is our first vector right there. That's 10 kilometers per hour. And then we have our next vector, which we add because we know how to add vectors. Velocity of the water relative to the earth. And that gives us a resulting vector right here which is velocity of the boat relative to the earth. Okay, now we can put that through Pythagorean theorem and we get 10 squared plus five squared is equal to the square root of 25 squared is equal to 11.2 kilometers per hour. We also need a direction because as we know, this is only magnitude. We could put these magnitude signs here and then we could say um, we need the direction. So we need this uh, theta, tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent opposite being five kilometers per hour, adjacent being 10, and we get an angle of 26.6 degrees. So our final answer of the velocity of the boat relative to the earth is 11.2 kilometers per hour north, 26.6 degrees east. Okay, that was also a very easy question. Let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated so we can see how important it is that we add vectors properly. Here's our third and final example. A plane can travel at 210 kilometers per hour relative to the air. The pilot points the plane in a direction 
north 20 degrees east and begins flying. The wind velocity is 50 kilometers per hour west 35 degrees south. The question is, what is the velocity of the pilot relative, sorry, of the plane or the pilot relative to the ground? So, here's our chain rule. The first thing you do is set up a chain rule. The velocity of the plane relative to the ground will be equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the wind plus the velocity of the wind relative to the ground. And that's pretty straightforward. And we take a look at our subscripts and sure enough, the two outside ones coincide with what we're trying to find. And again, the inside ones, they're both W here, can, you could think of, cancel each other out, okay? So, I think we're in good shape here. Let's draw a picture of this, um, of this question. So, we're going to start off with the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. Let's see if I can get this all into one screen. So, we have the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, and that is north 20 degrees east. So here is our velocity of the plane. Sorry, this is the velocity of the plane relative to the wind. Velocity of the plane relative to the wind. And the velocity of the plane relative to the wind is 210 kilometers per hour, north 20 degrees east. We then add this vector to it as per our chain rule, which is the wind relative to the ground. So we add our 50 kilometers west 35 degrees south and the resultant of that will be as per the chain rule the velocity of the plane relative to the ground let's for our own sanity say north is positive and east is positive so please make sure that you write that in because we're going to have to solve this with components okay so let's take a look at solving this with components you don't have to solve this with components this could be done with uh, cosine law and sine law but let's do it with components just so we get some practice. Solving with the x component. Um, velocity of the plane relative to the ground x is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the wind x plus velocity of the wind relative to the ground x. And if you take a look at that diagram, you'll see that the velocity of the plane relative to the wind x is sine 20 times 210. And then the velocity of the wind relative to the ground x, let's go back here, just see if we can get this. So this is our first vector there. So our first component is sine 20 uh, times 210. I'm going to get rid of that because I want to show you the next vector, which is this one at the very top here. But because it's going west, it's a negative value. So please make sure that you note that the cos 35 times 50 for the velocity of the wind relative to the ground x is a negative value. Okay, and solving that equation, we can get the fact that the velocity of the plane relative to the ground x is 30.84 kilometers per hour east. Let's do the same thing here for the y component. Unfortunately, I have to span this over a little bit, but the y component of um, the velocity of the plane relative to the wind is going to be positive, and we will, we can actually get it over here, and so it will be cos 20 times 210. The y component of the wind vector, however, will be negative. So it will be sine, negative sine 35 times 50. Okay, and it will in the end be equal to 168.6 kilometers per hour. Sorry, the, the, this will be negative. In the end, the whole velocity of the plane relative to the ground will be 168.6 kilometers per hour north when you add a negative vector to our initial velocity of the plane relative to the wind in the y component. Okay? So, are we done? No, we're not yet done. We know that the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, which is what we're trying to find, is equal to... Pythagorean's theorem saying that it's equal to the x component plus the y component. 30.84 kilometers.